Uh, Jason Flowers is their full back at 21. And then Chris Smith is at um, number two. He's on the wing. Grant Anderson, Adrian Vole, Simon Middleton. They're the three quarters. Danny O, Mike Ford, the halves. Dean Sampson, Richard Russell, Nathan Sykes. Andrew Schick and Ian Tonks are the uh, second row pairing with Brendan Tutor, the baby faced assassin, as he was known a few years ago. That moves forward. Richard Gay, Paul Smith, Dick and Edwards, Spencer Hargrave are the substitutes. And the rear of fireworks will tell you that it's the rhinos about to come out now. So it's a tumultuous round of applause. Two mascots this evening. Tremendous sight there, as ladies. It really is full of tremendous sight. It really is a tremendous atmosphere here. Again, it's almost impossible to hear yourself speak and think when the fireworks are going off. Last man out for Leeds, Yesin Harris, and already he's looking very much a rhino. And uh, the team tonight will be looking to carry on the good work from last Friday night and try and get consecutive victories in Super League, which would, of course, take Leeds into the top four. Yes, and uh, just... Uh going through the Leeds team and interesting to say I watched the video of the uh, St Helens game uh, on Friday night and the crowd were chanting there's only one yes in Harris well you've made it when the crowd chant that's here at Leeds that's right he's played what 120 minutes so far in a uh, blue and amber shirt and he's already uh, getting legendary status and well, Leeds I, I don't think it'll be long before he's as revered as some of the most famous names that have ever played for the club well Leeds uh, line up with Damien Gibson at fullback Paul Sterling Richie Blackmore Phil Hassan Marcus St Alaire the halves are Yestin Harris and uh, Ryan Sheridan, Martin Marcello, Wayne Collins, Jamie Matthew, the forwards with Adrian Morley, Anthony Farrell and Gary Mercer, the uh, making up the pack. Cummins, Fozard, Field and Holroyd are the um, substitutes and it's really nice to see Phil Francis Cummins back in the side this evening. Yeah, he's been a, a star performer since he turned professional at the age of 17 and got nothing but praise for him. He's already broken records. There's several more for him to, to attain and uh, I, I think he could well be one of the biggest stars this, this game's ever seen. But certainly look at that Leeds bench. All players that have come through the Leeds junior ranks. We talked about it earlier. It's... Uh, it, it's just a sign of the way things are going at Headingley and uh, let's hope that the, the match lives up to all the uh, the pre-match hype as far as Leeds are concerned. Well, Castleford tonight's visitors, they'll be looking to put one over on Leeds. They didn't win here last season. They were virtually the only decent side that lost here last season. Um, yes, probably the, the best victory Leeds had in Super League was here against Castleford. And yes, in Harris starts the game. And again, we're a little bit late with the kickoff. It's nearly 25-7. to 7. And Castleford just running the ball forward back up towards the... Uh, 20 metre line and Castleford looking to move that ball forward again there in the tackle good tackling coming in from Leeds from Richie Blackmore Andrew Schick Gary Mercer and a penalty there Leeds for a round the neck tackle from Stuart Cummins so that's his signal his intentions um, early in the piece tonight going to well, have no tackles over the shoulder no we talked early on about uh, the referees and as long as they're consistent that's all you can ask He's, he said his stall out he said very early on that uh, he's going to penalise the high tackle let's hope he uh, carries that through Nathan uh, Sykes just charging forward and Castleford are just inside the Leeds uh, half of the field and the ball spinning back towards the halfway line as Castleford looked to go through good defence from yesterday Harris there on uh, number 12 for Castleford and uh, but they don't appear to have a number 12 on their it's team Brendan sheet. Brendan Tutor's 12, I think. Oh, Brendan Tutor. He's down as 13 here. But uh, never mind. We watch Mike Ford just dropping off, looking to bring Dean Sampson barging through. And what a sight, Sampson looks with his head shaved. Yeah, you've got Sampson and Tonks both with shaved heads, and uh, that's going to make them look fearsome, if nothing else. Castleford up to the Leeds 10 metre mark. It's up to the last tackle. Leeds defence have caught pretty well. Mike Ford's in at dummy half. He's looking to put a little chip over. And they've probably noticed that Leeds... Um, didn't particularly play very well in the um, game from uh, kicks. A couple of kicks were fumbled in the St Helens game by the Rhinos, including the one that led to the Bobby Golden try at the end. But, uh, Again, though, a bit of a nothing chip there from Mike Ford. He's, he's obviously only been there a very short length of time. It was a good set of six from Castleford. They got up the pitch quite well, but uh, nothing much on the end of it. And uh, we've got Paul Sterling with his new uh, sort of greyish boots. That's a good charging forward there from Martin Marcella up to the 20 metre line and somehow Phil there doesn't quite seem to be the atmosphere and excitement tonight. No, well I think it's going to be one of those uh, occasions where really the, the players are going to have to put something special on before uh, the crowd get uh, really excited and it's something to do with the relative positions of these clubs. Well, Blackmore just trying to find a way through and uh, no way through and eventually he gets one round the neck and the referee says that's a penalty so Yeston Harris can look to find touch. Well, we called for consistency and we've certainly had it and Yestin Harris takes a quick tap and that's good to see. 
up to halfway line before he uh, and the bugler comes out in force again there the crowd loving him and again another penalty for a flop tackle coming in there it was uh, number nine Richard Russell that uh, perpetrated that offence so Leeds now a really good chance Phil to put some pressure on in attack yep it's the first time really Leeds have been down in the Castleford half and they've got to make it pay and just uh, in front of us Phil Larder the Sheffield coach he'll be looking to pick up some tips for Sunday yeah we should have given him a blindfold when he came up here Martin Masella just drives the ball forward so Leeds just in front of the north stand side looking to drive forward with the props that's Anthony Faddle gets the ball off Jamie Matthew again plays up to that 20 metre mark before they're brought down and Leeds just 15 metres in from touch on the north stand side Morley now switching play again Collins brings Justin Harris in and quite a lot of play there and uh, a forward pass has been given and really Leeds playing a lot of um, football there and getting absolutely nowhere Phil well again probably I don't know if that was a called move for Adrian Morley to switch the ball back on the outside to Wayne Collins but a referee from a, a, a while away picked a, a forward pass and he was actually probably right but it, it was unnecessary really to come back in uh, we had the back line set we should have gone with that so on the 20 metre mark tackle there Castleford winning the scrum centre field moving the ball back towards the north stand side here and Castleford are playing with their backs to the scoreboard that means they're playing towards the pavilion end of the ground and Leeds, of course, attacking that scoreboard. And Tuta just driving forward. He's indeed number 12. Just watch Samson there. Oh, that looks a forward pass a mile, and it's gone away with it there. And it's Adrian Voles, I think, who's going up there. He gets a good pass out there, and uh, the pass from Samson looked a mile forward. <laughs> he did. Everybody looked round to see the referee giving it, and he didn't. And there's Vowles in support, and Chris Smith very nearly away. And the chip over is uh, for Damien Gibson. He can allow that to run dead and uh, we've been playing approximately uh, four, three, four minutes now on the clock still nil-nil, Leeds nil, Castleford nil the Rhinos versus the Tigers and the referee not uh, allowing play and that's a, uh, a facet that's coming to the modern game it's crept in, it's not whether it's an edict from the rugby league but players are not being allowed to take a quick tap now at the 20 metres as long as there is a player offside from one of the other clubs well I, I think again it, it you know you're doubly penalising the team there because uh, really if they can take a quick tap penalty and catch the opposition offside a second time they should have the advantage of the extra 10 metres and but uh, as you say it's it's trying to even it down and uh, Leeds have got their third penalty and uh, they're on the charge and Damien Matthew leads that charge into the Castleford half of the field just six seven metres inside the Castleford half as Gary Mercer carrying the ball on playing the best rugby of his career at Leeds certainly for the last three or four years Having a great season this season. Yes, Tim Harris now with the ball in his hands. Floats a lovely ball out to Sheridan. Sheridan running, brings back inside for um, Anthony Faddle. Faddle gets the ball back to Morley. Morley's got a bit of space. He runs into one man. Knocks off another. Finds Harris again. Harris finds Masella. Masella can't get the ball away. Good defence there from Castleford. As Masella was a flowing move from Leeds. It was Grant Anderson who got in the way there. And Mercer, arcing run of his, runs round almost through the gap. Not quite. Up to the 20 metre mark. Touchline side. Sterling goes from dummy half. He can afford to do that at this stage of the game last tackle coming up now and Harris wants the ball in his hands and he'll get that ball from Collins good pass there and Harris looking to put long ball short ball for Adrian Morley turns round oh Morley's thrown the ball back for Harris but unfortunately Harris was nowhere near the man no. near was um, Richard Again, Russell for Castleford poor option on the sixth tackle there gave possession away Adrian Morley looking for someone to give the ball to because he was going to be tackled in possession and only found Richard Russell who's now darting away from acting half back so we've got uh, Castleford coming away now over the halfway line with Mike Ford and Mike Ford oh that's a gap Simon Middleton little bit of try for Castleford inside ball for Grant Anderson time up Simon Middleton's ball and really some sloppy defending there from Leeds yeah missed tackle by Gary Mercer and you can't do that against Castleford um, put Middleton away Middleton's a pacey lad but on the inside coming across was uh, Grant Anderson and he takes the score round under the post and not the start Leeds would have wanted but one missed tackle just shows you against any opposition they're going to come up with a try that's right and it was a good uh, break there from Simon Middleton it was obvious that uh, either he would score himself or the support would because there was only Damien Gibson with that sort of pace and he couldn't cover both men so Castleford the start that they wanted they've been very disappointing in recent weeks I'm sure it's only a matter of time before they get things right and I'm sure that uh, as far as the Rhinos are concerned they won't want it to be tonight Well, they put things right. That will certainly give them confidence if they were lacking. They, they broke the defensive line very easily. It was a one man-on-man -man tackle missed and uh, you just can't do that, particularly when there's people like Mike Ford out there and uh, he'll make you pay. That's right, well there's perhaps this will be the catalyst that Leeds realise that it's not going to be a walkover. But it reminded me of the way Leeds have played in the opening few minutes, Phil, of the game at Halifax. 
Where yes, they... very, very much so. Started slowly and uh, got stronger as the game went on, but they'd left themselves too much to do. And interesting to see that uh, Tonks is doing the kicking. Yes, Ian Tonks converts. Castleford, six. Leeds, nil. And Dean Bell will be hoping that uh, that's the only points Castleford score tonight. Disappointing for Leeds. They've come in here on a, on a big high. Different expectation. Poor sixth tackle option between Morley and Harris. And they paid the penalty. And so we see Mike Ford looking to kick off now. 6-0 to the Tigers. Eight minutes gone. Kick spins downfield. Sheridan's lost it in the sun. Just holds his hands up there and Morley comes away with the football. And it's going to require a big game from some of these forwards now. Leeds have really got to take this game to uh, Castleford. They've had three penalties. 2-1 at the moment, Leeds. And they really haven't made the most of anything. They've uh, struggled to get any ground going. But of course... All clubs are feeling the pinch with extra games. Castleford played on Sunday. They didn't want to come here tonight. And Leeds played on Friday. And good running down the field there again from Matthew finds um, Collins. But Collins can't to do anything there except to take the tackle. Morley's turn now to drive forward. And again, Morley's put a lot of work in, but Leeds in those five tackles haven't broken over the halfway line. Yes, Dean Harris steps the attempted charge down of his kick and he manages to split the defence. All leads are offside, so they can wait now, and Stuart Cummins just signals to play on. And number 21 for Castleford, which is uh, Jason Flowers, just run the ball out. And again, Leeds allowing Castleford a little bit too much room on that far side over near the south stand. They certainly can't afford to do that with Chris Smith on that wing because he's one of the fastest players in Super League. And Leeds are dropping off their defence, not moving up as a line as quickly as we've seen them against Wigan and St Helens. Long ball comes out here for Andrew Schick. Now it's Grant Anderson's turn, the try scorer. And a man who again didn't settle at Halifax. We've seen another one for Castle this evening, although he's not playing Lee Harland. Two to chips over. And that's Oh Sheridan's made a right pig's ear of that one, dropping the ball under no pressure whatsoever. Cass have six more tackles and there's really nobody to beat, and this could be a second try for Castleford. Somehow somebody got back and tackled Mike Ford. It was uh, number five, it was um, Phil, Phil Hassan Hayes, was and Phil Damian Hassan. Gibson. And Samson now puts the ball out. That's knocked down by Collins. That'll be six more tackles. So Leeds, at the moment, Phil, just look at an average ragbag outfit. That's right. They're absolutely at sixes and sevens. Nathan Sykes just driving forward. And quality player, Nathan Sykes. Russell, Russell goes from dummy half. And he Got, dropped the ball, I he think. He dropped the ball. The referee's going to give the try, though. I don't think there's a problem there. I think he better, if he consults with an in-goal touch judge, he'll say he dropped the ball. Yes, so that's uh, a knock-on. Well, that was lucky for Leeds because really Very Russell lucky. pushed his way over there and really you've got to get this. And the, the, the pick tap won't be allowed to be taken again until all the cast of the players are back on side. And the, ref, the crowd getting at the referee, but it's obvious that this is a, an edict from the Rugby League. It's not one that's been publicised or published, but um, it's certainly one of the problems. Gary Mercer looking to run round on the outside. Gets away from Simon Middleton. It's down onto the floor. Oh, that's going to be a penalty there from Dean Sampson player was tackled, stood up to play the ball in fact the referee says that Mercer wasn't tackled, well that's a ridiculous decision well I that's a very interesting decision uh, I was going to just about to say that perhaps uh, Gary Mercer was going to be do a voluntary tackle but uh, he was getting up and clearly playing the ball when he was hit by Dean Sampson and the referee said he was into touch well, strange decision but uh, that's what Leeds have got to live with at the moment and uh, They've again conceded, put the ball down early in the piece, as it were. And uh, they've already conceded one try and almost a second to Castleford. Then they're going to lose the ball early in the tackle count. Andrew Schick, uh, a man who played here for the Castleford Alliance team and was substituted. Tutor. And he will certainly not give up tonight. And Blackmore knocks him down. Mike Ford stepping, weaving, gets Richard Russell away. Oh, and then Sampson reaches back for the football. Good play by Sampson. And Sampson eventually knocked down. But Castleford are now in the Leeds 20 metre area. 10 metres from that line as they move the ball. There's a big gap there if you can get through. Good defence from Leeds. But there was a huge gap there then. The ball goes back to the open side. Ford looks to drop the goal. That's charged down. And Castleford have it. And they could have a try on the far side. Grant Anderson throws the ball back inside. There will be six more tackles though for Castleford. They needn't throw the ball around. Six more again. So that's... Another waste of time for Leeds, giving the ball away, giving possession away in this quarter. A test of their defence now as Mike Ford comes running. Oh, he skips round Wayne Collins there. And he's just three metres short. Castle the go again from dummy half with um, Adrian Valls. Adrian Valls at his outside wide out there, bringing the ball back under the post. Ford finds um, Danny O. 
eventually it's uh, Tonks that's brought down Castle have moved the ball back towards their right through the hands of Danny Ord again and uh, Samson coming charging on and Leeds can pick the ball up and maybe get away from Marcus Sindelay ran right into the only player that was in 50 yards of him there to tackle him Philisand makes the break and really Leeds have got to get their act together on attack at this uh, stage of the game we've seen it sloppy but defending and very poor attacking at the moment from Leeds yeah they need to settle down Sindelay goes made a lot hard. of mistakes Leeds Adrian Morley not his game to be driving forward and a props game and lost the ball in the tackle there and luckily for him it went backwards yeah and there were four cast players there somehow Wayne Collins came up with the ball which was important Mercer again looks to run but a great defence there from Andrew Schick Blackmore finds Faddle who stood picking his nose wasn't really expecting that then and Yari and Harris again on the last the tackle down. and it's a good job Harris has got a big boot on him but Leeds really need to chase that and the chase is really poor from Leeds Flowers picks the ball up on his own dead ball line runs up to the 20 metres up to the over the 20 metres before anybody comes to tackle him and that tackle is Andrew Faddle it was a fantastic kick from uh, Yestin Harris but the chase wasn't good enough oh we'll see Richard Russell now move the ball to his right in fact he takes the run himself knocks off Gary Mercer gets the ball back to Simon Middleton and Middleton's away well almost away good defence from Yestin Harris who's having to do everything tonight because nobody else really wants to do anything at all and now Castleford have got another penalty so the punch has been thrown, I think, would that be from Wayne Collins? Looked like it. Right on halfway, so again Leeds will be doing a spell of defending when really they ought to have been down here tackling Castleford on their own line. It's a really strange lack of atmosphere this evening, Phil. That's right, it's uh, very much after the Lord Mayor's show. And that was what Dean Bell was very worried about, that Leeds would uh, just feel they had to turn up. He's obviously spoke to the players, but when you've got a game within a few days, it's very difficult to get the previous game out of the system. Nathan Sykes drives up to the... 20 metre line Castleford looking to spin that ball through the arms of Danny Ardeen Samson now ball gets the ball out of the tackle and here come Castleford again and Middleton's gone without the football and Sterling would you believe has run into touch well he's got to give the first knock on there yes yeah, so I think uh, he can't penalise Paul Sterling now that's right and, uh, obviously if Sterling had got away he would have had the advantage but having stepped into touch then you go back to the first defence although from what we saw of the tackle on Gary Mercer before we wouldn't take anything for granted. That's right, Mercer tackled when he looked to be uh, getting up to play the ball. Samson comes in and knocks him off guard. Mercer again. Goes from uh, the back of the scrum. And yes, and Harris in at dummy half finds Phil Hassan. Hassan looking to sort things out. Gets away from the first man and the second. He's got Marcus Sindelair outside him. That's a good ball for Sindelair. He has to step back inside. He hasn't got the beating of Jason Flowers. And Sindelair takes the tackle. No being at dummy halfway and Collins is a mile behind, he gets there now. And Yestin Harris finds Sheridan leads now, look, last looking to put it together, Morley gets the ball back to Sheridan, that's a forward pass. Referees picked it up and it was forward, Phil. It looked forward from here, and again Leeds perhaps putting in a pass there where it wasn't necessary, it was only the uh, second tackle, third tackle. Third tackle at the most, and, uh, but at last they did show there what they can do when they're on attack, some nice flowing rugby. What they don't need to do though is panic because we've only had, what, 15 minutes of this game. Leeds haven't looked impressive. That was a good chance, but uh, wasted. Wasted opportunity indeed. And Mike Ford, the uh, Castleford uh, scrum half, feeds the ball. Oh, and a poor tackle from Harris comes in on Brendan Tooter and Castleford with Vols. Lacks a yard of pace to tell me Adrian Vols. He certainly doesn't lack any pace as he comes up from the uh, 30 metre mark from his own line into the lead half of the field Tonks will drive that ball forward knocked down by Morley Russell finds uh, Samson again and Samson looking he's oh, really he's looking to get Samson. the ball out the tackle looking to move that ball out the tackle Lick Castleford now with Mike Ford stepping, dodging, weaving and again it's back to, t to Tonks and Tonks finds Tutor and Tutor goes forward steps out of the tackle gives a pass out and that's going to be a penalty for something that's gone on in the tackle there. And uh, not being squared at the play of the ball. Well, that's strange because the ball was still in play, but the penalty's gone to lead. So, presumably, Castleford is, is saying that they had too many Castleford men at the play of the ball there. That's right. Well, you can only have two. Unusual lead. penalty. Yes, and uh, referees have tightened up on that area this season. Sides looking to claim an unfair advantage. So Leeds then, just with a sniff in the Castleford half of the field, find, bring Jamie Matthew charging forward. 
And Lee takes play up to the 30 metre mark. And this is the furthest that Leeds have been in possession. And Ryan Shiddiden will look to bring Martin Masella on the charge. So Let's hope Leeds can do a full set of six. Yes, the four, four options at the moment. Leeds have not really had a set of six. Yestin Harris, drop off ball inside for Gary Mercer. Mercer finds Sheridan and Sheridan looks to judge him, weave his way through. It's still the first wave of defence. No one in support there for Sheridan as he looked to offload the ball. Mercer will run himself from dummy half. Will take play into the uh, 20 metre mark. That's four tackles gone. And Wayne Collins now moves the ball to his right with Yestin Harris. Yestin Harris looking to step, going himself, is he? Still go, oh, well, there's his first goal. try for Leeds. First try for Leeds, class try there from uh, Yestin Harris. It's all but uh, a matter of fact, but Yestin Harris kidded off the Castleford side there with a beautiful dummy. Looked to switch the ball, looked to move, looked to pass inside and out, then just decided to go on one of those short arcing runs and over for the try. Well, so, again, there was absolutely nothing on there for Yestin Harris. And it just went to prove that when you need class, there's the man that's going to come up with it. And certainly the ball really went to the wrong side after four good drives. Harris found himself isolated, shimmied his hips one way, dummied the other. The Castleford defence opened up. The guy's total class. We've said it before, that's going to be the first of many tries he scores for Leeds. See if he can convert his own handiwork. But uh, that's pulled Leeds back into the game and given the crowd something to cheer about. So Harris again then looks to uh, add the extra points. That's a successful kick. And so and, uh, I think you can tell from the cheers that uh, he really is going to be a, a hero here. It leads six all after a pretty uninspiring first 18-19 uh, minutes. But uh, one thing that slid up the gloom, Yestin Harris. Yes, Yestin Harris is moving on up. So Yestin will. Uh, Yestin Harris will get the game restarted. And the long kick downfield, and really Leeds now need to chase this kick. It's a good kick. Mike Ford will find uh, Tonks. And Tonks runs up to his 10 metre line, but he's brought down. So that's a good kick and chase from Leeds. And Leeds now need to pen Castleford in their own quarter for six tackles. And wait for the mistake. And Jason and Flowers nearly got away. There's a yes, good tackle from Wayne Collins. It was because Gary Mercer had missed him. And I think with due, due respect to Gary Mercer, who's put in a prodigious effort over the last three or four games he's looking a bit tired out there again trying to make up for a missed tackle by putting in a big hit there on uh, Schick, Schick. Well, Castleford moving that ball now with the Dean Sampson Sampson great tackle from Wayne Collins and Castleford only just up to halfway on the sixth tackle so that's good play from Leeds and the forward kick will come downfield Damien Gibson can let it bounce two three four five six times before he picks it up oh would you believe he let it bounce two three four five six times too many because he spilled the ball there under no pressure whatsoever should have took it on the first bounce Phil yeah they always say don't let a rugby ball bounce perhaps what he should have done once he'd let it go was trap it with his foot first but again no frills football from Castleford a long kick from Mike Ford Damien Gibson had a lot of time indecision knocked on on his own ten and leads under pressure Yes, Saints 2, Salford nil is a scoreline coming in from uh, Knowsley Road. And, uh, Leeds get the ball, St Ellen's should have St Ellen's. Um, Castleford get the ball out of the scrums. And, uh, oh, almost a try there to, uh, difficult to see the numbers of the worst Grant I've Anderson. seen. Grant Anderson, Le Castleford all playing held up over the line, the numbers are very difficult. White shirts and yellow numbers don't make for good. And Ford, oh, and that's a try, the simplest try you'll see in your life there. Absolute disgraceful defence from Leeds. No idea what was going on. Mike Ford had three or four dummy runners, which is something Leeds never have. And uh, they all went one way, and the ball eventually for Andrew Schick. He didn't even realise he was so close to the line, he just fell over the line. Again, though, great play from Mike Ford, and he really has been the dominant player out here tonight so far. If Leeds allow him latitude and let him run, then he will uh, cause problems. It was his long kick that... Uh, Damien Gibson fumbled and then on the third or fourth play Ford brought it back on the blind side ran across the face of the Leeds defence nobody picked him up dropped the ball inside and as you say Schick caught it and fell over in one movement and Castleford bat it back in the lead and that is very poor defending from Leeds they look very very tired can't blame the finger at anyone in particular just a, a poor defence option round about the um, the market area and the old Leeds failings of not being able to tackle close to the line coming back tonight we've seen Richard Russell denied because he dropped the ball but the fact was he was there to put the ball down and um, that must be really worrying Dean Bell at the moment yeah I would think so and Danny Orr a big weight on his shoulders to convert this he's at the post so lucky for Leeds two tries then to Castleford to Anderson and Schick one Tonks conversion and one lead strider Harris converted by Harris so the score here on uh, 23 minutes is Leeds 6 Castleford 10
And again, not particularly inspiring for the big crowd here. They've come to, uh, the vast majority of them, pay homage to the display on Friday night and they've seen nothing like it so far. No, either on attack or defence. And uh, Adrian Morley just running forward. And sometimes um, it'd be nice to think that in this game that Leeds had an Andy Speak character who regularly uh, takes the game by the scruff of the neck when the academy cells find themselves down here. But Leeds haven't got anybody with that sort of... Uh, Wilter in the first in the first team. They've got plenty of players with plenty of skill and plenty of drive, but uh, Andy Speak certainly uh, takes the game by the scruff of the neck when Leeds are in this position in the academy side. So Anthony Farrell, An Anthony Farrell, just uh, driving towards the, the halfway line. Matthew now, and the Leeds big men are being co completely controlled in the middle of the field at the moment. They're having much more difficulty. And Danny R looks to chase Justin Harris. He's kicked down. The kick comes in. Spins, it's a good kick and uh, it's a better chase from Leeds this time, but I think it's going to go out and beat everyone. Yeah, one last Just spin on its end took it out, but now Leeds need to defend and keep Castleford in uh, in their own half of the field. No gaps, no missed tackles. And try and force the error. Leeds have had a couple of enforced, un unenforced errors. The one particularly from Damien Gibson, which ultimately cost the try, will be the one that uh, is most talked about. Samson again knocks the ball up towards the 20 metre mark. To the sorry, to about 10 metres inside his own half mark, Andrew Schick running out wide and tackled there by Jamie Matthews. But Castleford are now up to the halfway line, they've had three tackles, that's not good defending from Leeds. Two to the game, brought down though, good tackle there from Jamie Matthews from Wayne Collins, moving the ball out to the right towards the north hand side. Mike Ford dropping off inside for Tonks, and Tonks is through a tackle there, poor defensive effort there from Masella. And Tonks still going, running about, and Castleford now in that 20 metres on the last tackle. And really, this is a lackadaisical display by Leeds, and I bet Dean Bell can't wait to uh, get um, Leeds in the dressing room. Mike Ford drops a goal right from the 20 metres. Castleford go further ahead. And again, sensible option from Mike Ford. We know games are close. And, and again, it was the last tackle. There was nothing on. Mike Ford, sensible player, and he, he really is uh, holding the whole show together at the moment. 26 minutes gone then. Castleford, 11 points to 6 and Leeds have got no one like Mike Ford tonight, a player who spent most of his last few years playing uh, second division rugby, he's been out for the last three months with an injury and uh, comes back here not fully fit and tearing Leeds apart and um, I bet Dean Bell just can't wait to get the team in at half time because this is a, a very poor performance and not the way to get the crowds coming to Headingley. Definitely not and again Sheridan holds his arms up, the ball's not going anywhere near him, perhaps he stood in the wrong place as uh, Adrian Morley just drives the ball up to the 20 metres that's better play from Leeds Sterling looking to try and find a way through but there's been no spark from Leeds on attack and some poor tackling on defence and Leeds get a penalty something that's gone on there with Brendan Tooter in the tackle again Leeds can't complain about the penalty count I've got it at 5-2 in their favour but they certainly haven't used it they haven't Justin Harris finds a touch 10 metres inside his own half of the field and Wayne Collins will just uh, Look to bring Matthew charging on. But Castleford are well alert to that. Three men in at the tackle there, including Schick, Sampson and Anderson. And Masella goes forward into the uh, baby-faced assassin. Lost the football, Martin Masella. And that just about sums up Leeds' evening. It does. Second tackle again. Leeds cannot complete a set of six. And a, a ball there from Ford's put Schick through a gap. Nobody really picking up Mike Ford whatsoever. Really, Mike Ford needs to be hit and hit hard in possession of the football. And Sheridan's missed another tackle on Middleton. And so has Blackmore and Middleton still going, but he's brought down now 30 metres from the Leeds line. Bows back to Danny Orr. He'll start taking control as well, Danny Orr, when he realises he's nothing to beat. Absolute disgraceful tackling from Leeds. They've put Castleford on the position to score again. Matthew and Collins in the middle of the field. Absolute disgraceful tackling. Allowed Tutor to slip through them. And Castleford here with Andrew Schick going close to the line. Well, there's no will to win in the Leeds side tonight, Phil. Nothing at all on defence. Absolutely nothing. Up to the last tackle now, Danny Orr. Finds Mike Ford. Mike Ford short ball. That's got to be forward. The crowd shout forward. The referee says it's OK. It'll be the turnover for Leeds. But again, nothing there for Leeds at all. Poor defence from Leeds. Not fired up at all for this one. No, there's definitely something missing. And Phil Hassan goes himself from dummy half. And that's the way he's only going to see the football because there's been nothing on attack from Leeds at all this evening. And uh, it's crying out for the introduction of a Graham Allroyd. Phil Hassan goes himself. Got a gap there, Phil Hassan. But three Castleford men close him down by the time he gets there halfway. He gets a penalty for a flop and uh, pulling at the ankle, says the referee. And it certainly was an interference there at the play of the ball. Again, Phil Hassan, the only player on the lead side that's looked capable of bringing this ball out with any purpose. 
Harris. And again, a mistake from Masella gave Castleford the position, and Castle Leeds have made more mistakes in this game than the whole of the season put together so far. Masella drives forward, and he knocks off one man, then two men, and now he's into the 20 metre area for Castleford. That's good play. Farrell's on the short ball, and somebody must have moved off the mark there because by the time Andrew Farrell got that ball, he had a Castleford play with him as well. Collins. Switching play, Adrian Morley back inside to Collins. Collins finds Harris, Harris, his drop-off ball is for Phil Hassan. Hassan tackled, but Leeds running back with this fancy pass work that they're doing, running all back into the heavy traffic area again. Harris now himself, is it going to be the Yestin Harris show? Ryan Sheridan takes men on, drops off for Blackmore. Blackmore would love a try tonight. Doesn't get one there because Schick hangs onto his ankles. Sheridan again finds Harris, Harris puts the ball out for Matthew, Matthew just takes the tackle, leads 10 metres short, centre field, Harris got the ball in his hands, moving the ball to his left, cross field kick comes in there, is it going to be a try? Try to Marcus Sindelair, in fact, the ball's gone dead, I thought Marcus Sindelair had scored the try there. Well again, Leeds had about a five-man overlap and for, for some reason, Yestin Harris elected to kick, I'm sure if that had gone uh, to hand, they would have they would have got Marcus Sindelair in. Yes, it looked like Sindelair had scored, he certainly dived, but then it appears he didn't dive with the football. So Leeds still trailing, six points to 11 here. We've been playing uh, around about the half hour mark now. And it's been a very poor, lackadaisical performance, both on attack and in defence from Leeds. They look to a clueless on attack and um, lazy on defence. And when Collins gets the ball back there, that's the first mistake Castle that have really made. It was Dean Sampson who knocked it down. Paul Sterling comes running across the field. Looks for the gap, he's the gap, Sterling. Just out attack there. Is he going to get the ball away? Can he go himself all the way? Oh, he's held short there with a the man outside him with no, no one anywhere near him. Marcus Sindelay tries to drive over. Can't drive over from dummy half. Sterling should have put the ball out there, Phil. Well, I think he did everything right and it was only a last-ditch tackle that stopped him. Yes, in Harris catches a high tackle for his pains as he tries to run in and gets the ball out of the tackle and leads have it now with Adrian Morley. Oh, Morley's pass was absolutely disgraceful there, but Harris, oh, Sindelay, is he going to go in? A good pass to the scene to try there. That's right. And the ball flew above... Um, Marcus in the lazy head, that's probably why Adrian Morley's not a standoff. Sheridan looking to go, dodges his way through, still going. Farrell's uh, on his shoulder, but he can't get there. Harris again now, takes the ball on, looks to go himself. Oh, Jamie Field has just come on, does a, a Jamie Field thing and knocks the ball forward. On for, on for uh, Jamie Matthew. So Field's on for Matthew, and that will put probably Farrell up to prop. But Leeds, that was the best chance Leeds have had. Three, four clear chances to score there. Couldn't take any of them. That's right. And, uh, six could points to costly. 11 on the trail. Could be indeed costly because Castleford have come here to win. They realise that at the moment they've really nothing to beat. And Samson again driving forward. And now Barry McDermott, who's sat on the bench, must be wishing he could get on that field. Yes, that's Game who they need. Crying out for somebody like uh, Barry McDermott to uh, barge his way forward. Richard Russell finds Mike Ford again. Ford running. Look, looking to go and he drops off he takes the ball up to the line and he passes well if you're watching that Ryan Shiddy and that's what scrum halves do he passes the ball close to the line but nobody really wants to tackle Mike Fudd they're just quite prepared to let him run and run and run until eventually the gap opens up because everybody's covered in his option and not the other one and a beautiful kick to the corner as well on last on the last yeah, tackle yeah great play there from Mike Fudd and so he really is dominating yes he's the he, in fact he's, he's played far better in this 31 minutes than I've ever seen him play before I'll give him due credit for that Yes, he's not a player that would uh, you'd be wanting to sign. And uh, I know Leeds were linked with him when he was in Australia. And then Alf Davis went to watch and came back and said, "No, nah, he's not good enough." Well, he's certainly proving differently tonight. And as Phil says, it's the best I've certainly seen him play. Mercer brings the ball away from the scrum down the blind side, and I'm not convinced at all, um, Phil, of the um, necessity now that every time there is a scrum, the loose forward picks it up and comes down the blind side. It doesn't no, really make any more. I think when you've ground. done it twice, then uh, certainly Phil Larder will have noted that one and won't be too bothered. Good run there from Wayne Collins from dummy half. Jamie Field now driving ball forward. It's good to see Jamie Field on. Yes, the outstanding hoping player on the Academy Tour last year. Yep, hope he makes Harris. a big impression. Long ball out for Philisand. Philisand's got men with him, and this time it's Gibson puts uh, Sindelair away. Sindelair well wrapped up and tackled. And none of them drew a man, and that's why it made it easy for the Castleford defence. And uh, Sindelair then decided he was tackled. There's a football, finds Harris again, and that's the sixth tackle leads only up to halfway. Good kick comes downfield, Flowers is underneath it, and it's bounced awkwardly for, for Flowers, and he can pick it up now, and the tackle is again, missed. Again, Masella can't go up there to make those tackles if he isn't going to make them. That's right, went right up and, and allowed uh, Flowers to come back 20 metres as he missed the tackle. 
And Grant Anderson just running in and really Leeds shouldn't be losing to sides that include people like Grant Anderson uh, who's been around Castleford seen for years without really uh, setting anyone alight. Simon Middleton played rugby union throughout the winter lost the ball in the tackle there the referee says play on because he hasn't a clue what to do about anything else the ball certainly came out in the tackle up to his touch judge for guidance on any Richard Russell comes storming down the middle of the field again knocks off one tackler up to halfway now leads six Castleford 11 is the score here from Headingley this evening you're listening to Radio Rhino on 1404 AM again the ball got out of the tackle it's Castleford's turn to look a bit shaky on attack now but they have got Mike Ford and they will tire but Leeds haven't really been able to put any pressure on them St Helens 2 Salford 6 a scoreline coming in from the Willows from uh, Norsley Road perhaps they've had a hangover as well well Leeds certainly have had a hangover this evening terrible mm -hmm. terrible hangover one of the worst uh, displays I've seen from Leeds it's back to the bad old days of the uh, first Super League season at the moment but I think the only thing you can say in their favour at 11-6 the game's uh, by no means a lost cause it certainly isn't but it's a good job to play in a side that's uh, Castleford and not playing a side that's in the top half of the table I mean, well, again, Castleford haven't got a point in the bottom of the league at the moment with due respect to Castleford who played extremely well tonight and again a stupid mistake from Leeds Wayne Collins forward pass to Jamie Field on what again the third tackle the third tackle and again Leeds putting themselves under all sorts of trouble and uh, just really nothing's going right for Leeds tonight the timing of the runs the timing of the passes and the ball comes out now to Mike Ford. Mike Ford just finds Jason Flowers. Flowers wrapped up by Damien Gibson. Castleford just moving the ball across the line. And Leeds not making the tackles and allowing uh, Chris Smith to be running about there. He's in danger of disappearing into a hole in the ground, but he's still managing to get the ball away. And again, somebody else gets the ball away. And it's gone backwards now. Now, can Leeds fall on the loose ball? No, they can't. But the referee says that's a knock-on. I think the referee's right there. But whether it was a Leeds hand or a Castleford hand, I don't know. Mm, it'd be difficult to see. You think if you're going to be giving the uh, scrum to Leeds? No, I have a feeling he might give it to. Yeah, gives it to Leeds. Oh, now Leeds have a chance. Now we're coming up to half time. There's about four minutes left, and really, <laughs> this game just seems to have crept along, Phil. At this. Uh, yeah, this we've stage. been used to two games of uh, outstanding pace and power and commitment and passion and. To be fair, this one's had none of those, and uh, other than from Castleford. And again, Mercer picks up the ball, makes good ground, but it's really there's no option there at the scrum when Leeds are doing that. There's no possible support play for, for Mercer. He just runs forward and eventually gets tackled. It makes good ground, but Leeds are not using the scrums as any options whatsoever. Masella. And it's been in the forwards where Leeds have been let down both on attack and defence. have made no platform whatsoever. They've picked up another penalty there. They're seventh. 7-2 the penalties and it's a good job for Leeds that it is for Lorick. the scoreline could have been even more in Castleford's favour well to be honest I think that's what's keeping Leeds in it at the moment yes and Alice will attempt to uh, kick at goal it's 40 metres he's certainly not uh, frightened of kicking the ball a long way isn't he Estin? no and I think as well he's realised that his side aren't playing well and you know points on the board when you're not playing well settle it down so Alice 40 metres from the line it's um, 20 metres in from touch so it's not far away from the post and uh, this just also eats up the clock. The other thing as well is that I think it's indicative that the Cass fans are clapping their players coming back to the mark even though they've conceded a penalty which is an indication of how well they've played tonight. Yes, they've played very well tonight. Castle of the line there, lowly league position. And Yestin Harris just looking to settle the ball down. Long, straight. Penalty Castleford. Uh, physio being told to get off the field. seem to be interfering with play but Grant Anderson was certainly receiving some form of attention but anyway referee he's in charge he sent them off and yes then Alice just lines up the kick now 40 metres from the line straight it hard strong well that's miles away it's not going to even reach the post and it's well to the right you could tell as soon as he'd kicked that that he'd missed kicked it and now Leeds need to tackle Simon Middleton mm -hmm. it is who uh, I suppose the disappointing thing there is that he didn't even kick it dead. No, and it went nowhere near. It was. You could see as soon as he struck the ball that it wasn't going anywhere near where it should have gone. That's the first uh, penalty we've seen yesterday. Now this miss in his Leeds career, proving that even he's fallible at times. Phil. Yes, I don't think anybody other than Phil Hassan has made a memorable contribution so far. Tackling in the middle of the field is uh, Jamie Field on uh, Samson Tutor. 
Again, I don't know what the crowd is here. Tuta steps out of one tackle, gets the ball away to Richard Russell. But Castleford are up to the last tackle and they're on the halfway line. And you can bet that Mike Ford is going to pump that ball downfield as long as he can. And Gibson has already uh, let one ball uh, bounce too many times. This time he decides to let it go dead. And Leeds have two or three minutes in which to get on the scoreboard before half time to bring this scoreline back to something that the Leeds fans will want to. It's a very, very poor first half from Leeds. And one which I'm sure that Dean Bell can't wait to get back in the dressing room and talk to them about. Just no spark on attack. No, a bit interesting to see the crowd reaction at half time because there are a lot of people here, but there really isn't a lot of noise. And let's to be hoped they don't start booing the team off at half time. Blackmore's away. And Blackmore's away. Sterling come to creep up there, but he couldn't get away. Uh, Ryan Sheridan looks the goal goes himself great play from Sheridan he's got Jamie Field with him Field won't have the legs couldn't get the ball away to Harris in support if Leeds move the ball to the left there should be something here Harris comes back to the right steps himself goes himself Harris takes play on can't get the ball away gets up he's under the post it's the last tackle Wayne Collins finds Sheridan Sheridan looks to find Blackmore Blackmore's flipped back inside and Castleford knocked that ball forward oh the referee says play on the Castleford player knocked that ball forward Phil surely yeah, I think the touch should have just seen it. Well, how bad refereeing is that? I mean, I've had a, a bit of a pillaging for calling referees this week. Stuart Cummins was five yards away. Castleford player clearly knocked the ball forward. Not just forward, it was almost a case of offside when the other Castleford man picked it up. He must have knocked it ten yards forward and Stuart Cummins was quite prepared to let play go on. Well, I think we need the big screen and I think that the referees, particularly referees on, in that situation, should have somebody with a big buzzer on their head. And when they make a mistake like that, they should be blasted between the ear holes <laughs> and the screen should be shown to them where they've made the mistake because it's all right waiting for the referee to call for the screen, but he wouldn't have called for a screen in that position. Not the old Dunce's cap. No, no not the old Dunce's cap. Leeds get the scrum then and Yestin Harris looks to put a ball away out to Damien Gibson. Gibson steps outside of the first tackle. And Leeds really Castleford need to are get looking tired. Leeds need to capitalise. They certainly do, and they've only got a couple of minutes left to do at the most. This could be the last set of six as Adrian Morley runs back into the heavy traffic area. Can't get the ball away. We're waiting for the hooter to go any second now. Wayne Collins then finds Justin Harris on the first receiver. Harris's kick is across field. Sterling gets the football, but so do Castleford, and the touch should just pointed for something there to say, I think, that he was offside. And again, I didn't think it was the best use of the ball on the last tackle. Well, it was it the third tackle, yes, on that's the, third. The, the strangest thing. And Leeds really looking to do all the fancy stuff without doing the basics right. And there goes the holder, so Leeds could have played out that set of six without any problem. Poor performance from Leeds, that's all we can say at half-time. Castleford opened the score, in with Anderson went over after a good break from... Um, Simon Middleton, Tonks converted, it was 6-0 and leads it back when Harris had a solo try, good play from him, converted himself 6-all, Schick had a try after good play from um, Mike Ford who's been the dominant figure on the side, too far out for Danny O's goal kick and then Mike Ford dropped a goal again, but Leeds strangely funny performance from Leeds, not one that we used to see from this season, half time then, Leeds 6, Castleford Tigers 11. Some half time stats. As Phil tries to get the team changes as Leeds come out. Matthew has topped the tackle count with 15. Farrell with 14. Collins with 14. And Sheridan with 14. And the drives Marcelo 11. Mercer 10. Morley 19. And the metres gained have been by Mari Marcelo with 94. Gary Mercer 57. And Adrian Morley 52. Leeds set of 6 21. The penalty 7 2 in the favour of Castle. The Leeds 11 minutes 38 seconds. Castle for 12 minutes 34 seconds. So who is um, Graham Holroyd on for? Phil? Well, the one big half time change is Graham Holroyd's on for Ryan Sheridan. Uh, looking at Castleford, I don't think they've made a change, but that is hopefully the spark that uh, we saw in Paris will maybe turn it round. Yes, and let's hope so for Leeds' sake. All right, immediately on the ball under the kickoff finds Adrian Morley, and I'm sure that Dean Bell's words will be ringing in Leeds' ears in this first half. It's a pity we haven't got the touchline uh, operator in this second half because uh, I'd love to find out from Paul Fletcher what was said at half time. So Gary Mercer just driving forward and takes play into the. Uh, Midway between the 20 metres and the halfway line. Farrell running out wide. Burst the tackle. Can't burst the second. Four Castleford men coming, but he's sucked men in there. If Leeds can whip that ball out, there must be space on that far side. Harris finds Masella. Masella just drives forward, takes play up to halfway. It's looking as though he's uh, fired up in this second half. Martin Masella. Collins again goes from dummy half. Fancy steps just one step to the right. Finds um, Harris. Harris gets the ball to Holroyd, Holroyd looking to offload there but decides to go himself, takes the tackle up to the last tackle now, Harris will have the football in his hands and he puts boot to ball, that comes across field Leeds are chasing Phyllis hands underneath well picked up there by Castleford in fact Leeds have let uh, 
It was Marcus and Alec. Chris Smith go and then got him at the second attempt, and that's uh, a dangerous thing to do because Chris Smith can move. Yep, you can't let Chris Smith go, and uh, Leeds have got to remain disciplined, like we said at half time, not panic and try to score with every play. That was a set of six, but it wasn't a very good execution at the end of it. 6 11 then Leeds trail here at uh, Headingley this evening, and the Rhinos will look to. Uh, Certainly start this second half better than the start of the first. Good defence though at the moment. That's great defence on the, the big man Samson out on the far side underneath the um, south stand. And that's a better tackle as well on Brendan Tutor. And Leeds now looking to close Tasselford down inside ball for, for Tonks. Again, he's played well considering it's his first game of the season. Yes, he's played well tonight, Tonks. And uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, effort from Castleford because they've been looking to... Um, Sterling gets the ball, and again out of his hands. Well, well done the referee, the Castleford players were all offside and Cass making a change, bringing on Richard Gay. Uh, looks as though it's Adrian Vowles coming off who's taking a knock. Well, there was anything with Richard Gay, a player who I thought would have made the Castleford full box fat his own when he came from uh, Hull. And the bugler comes out and really leads need all the bugling they can get. Jamie Field drives forward. And we see Wayne Collins in at dummy half, finds Allroyd. Allroyd will spin that ball out to Harris. Harris running across the soda field, looks to go himself, Harris. He's got the legs to go, Harris. Oh, good tackle coming in there, gets the ball away. Marcus Sinelaire, he's got Phil Sam with him, doesn't need him, couldn't use him because of the cover. Gets up again, knocked down in the 20 metres, better play for Leeds. Up the south stand, south the north stand side, they came Allroyd with the ball in his hands now. Harris is back in position now to get that football. Finds Marcella, Marcella just drives forward. Can't get the ball away, but this is better from Leeds now. Looking to throw the ball about with some conviction. Blackmore spots a gap on the short side. Opens the line up for Sterling. Sterling's in for the try in the corner. Lovely play there from Mitchie Blackmore. He opened the gap like with a tin opener there, Phil. And that's the best we've seen of Leeds tonight. All came from Yestin Harris again. An arcing run. Took the defence on. Looked like they'd covered him. Got the ball out to Marcus St. Hilaire over 50 metres. Quick play the ball. Crossed the pitch. The benefit of having Graham Holroyd in there. Richie Blackmore taking it on the blind side found Paul Sterling, Sterling over in the corner a la Jim Fallon and that was a great try for Leeds just what they need after what three minutes after the resumption and great spotting of the play there by um, great spotting of the play by Richie Blackmore he noticed there was a gap on that short side went the short side drew the man put Sterling in lovely in at the corner and it still needed scoring and it was well done by Paul Sterling and the try scorer for the Rhinos so we're watching uh, Paul Sterling, Paul Sterling. Just uh, coming back to the applause of the crowd. And we've got, uh, again, the Castle of Physio in between Yestin Harris and the goal kick. And Harris is right on the touchline side. In fact, if he was any further on the touchline side, he'd be down the South Stand Tunnel. And just biding his time, Yestin Harris, the Castle of uh, Physio attending to uh, the player. And Stuart Cummins is not very happy with it, I can assure you. And I think Stuart, Stuart Cummins should be telling them if he needs treatment, even if he uh, he's definitely coming off, it should be behind the ball. I know he's stopped the clock, but uh, it must just uh, put off Yestin Harris. Though you have to say, the one bit of class needed at the start of the second half, and Harris came up with it. So a bit difficult to see who's going off for Castleford over there. It looks uh, could be Grant. Uh, is it? Could uh, be Brendan Tutor. Oh, no, it's, it could be Grant Anderson. Well, we'll see as the player comes down. The castle with numbers are Paul in yellow on a white background under floodlights. Just uh, doesn't look good at all. Yes, in Addison, right from the touchline side. Get over. Kicks it, scamps it over. Just misses there. And uh, it's 10 points to 11 then. Leads two tries. Just the one conversion. Hi, this is Paul Stone. You're listening to Radio Rhino on 1404 AM, the, the main station. It is indeed the main station. It's the main station for all Leeds Rhinos Rugby League fans because you will... Uh, Pick up all the information from Radio Rhino. And Jason Flowers comes and gets the ball. Oh, great defence coming in there from Morley and Farrell. And Flowers will know that he's, uh, he's felt that one. And again, the whole atmosphere is in upper gear. Mike Ford looking to bring Grant Anderson on the foot. In fact, it's two to Simon Middleton looks to go. But a good defence coming in there from uh, Gary Mercer. Samson now coming down the field, gets a ball away to Schick. Well, surely Andrew Schick isn't going to run the length of the field. He certainly isn't. Good defence coming in there from Graham Allroyd. But Castleford opened leads up again, then, and that's dangerous. Castleford have put the ball down now. Richard Russell, it was, I think. In fact, it wasn't Richard Russell. I think it's it Danny, Danny Orr. Yes, looking very similar in facial expression and haircut. 
and um, Danny Hoff put the ball down so Leeds I wouldn't say a let off there because Casper only just in the Leeds there for the field but Schick showed what uh, can be done when you uh, have a good player like Mike Ford in the side all right switch his play now finds Blackmore on that short side Blackmore looking to try and drive his way forward Leeds five scrums then the scrums tied at five all now eight two the penalties Sterling looking for a way through no way through for the try scorer this time Leeds almost up to halfway centre field leading uh, trailing here by ten points to eleven and Gary Mercer looks to move things forward and that's good play and eventually four cast of the men bring him down now can he get the ball played quickly because there's four men here doing absolutely nothing if that ball can go out there must be a gap Jamie Field driving forward into the Castleford half of the field and and again Wayne Collins obstructed as he tried to get to dummy half that's good play from young Sykes Harris spots the gap goes himself can't get the ball away up to the last tackle now so Holroyd will have to take charge on the last tackle he's got the football in his hands now Pikes up a high up and under everyone's on side Sykes is un underneath it so it's Phil Hassan and Sykes is tackled but not correctly by Hassan see the referee and the play was allowed to go on and uh, but fortunately for Leeds Holroyd and Sykes Holroyd and um, Hassan covered over and Sykes made uh, not Sykes uh, Flowers made no progress whatsoever so Castleford just bringing the ball away from their own quarter now with uh, Nathan Sykes and Nathan Sykes is a uh, forward pass looked, looked to be coming there to Brendan Tutor and Leeds have given away a penalty for holding down it's Wayne Collins and Jamie Field who were involved in the tackle and really Leeds don't need to be giving penalties away no I don't think Leeds can complain though they've had the run of the penalty count that's a quick tap taken by Mike Ford oh the man running forward there again we can't see who it is it's really poor numbering on the Castleford shirts Phil it is it uh, looks like Danny Orr was Danny Orr that was only from his stature Samson just takes play out of Castleford 30 metres from the Leeds line over on the south stand side just bringing the ball back now with Tonks Tonks is knocked down but Castleford have made 6-7 metres in that play and Leeds will need to defend now and they're caught out napping late over on that far side oh that's got to be a try to Castleford over on that far side Slop, absolute sloppy defence again from Leeds absolute sloppy defence the man was tackled a metre short and is still allowed to get up and, and play the ball and is it Danny Orr who scored the try or is it Richard Russell however it is it's Leeds again trailing the game a, a really p poor performance there from Leeds and again slipped out the tackle not grounded and carried on scored the try <laughs> that's all we can say Danny Orr with a difficult kick from the touchline side and if he gets this he deserves it well he doesn't get it and the referees the touch judges were waving it away with as soon as it left his boot but again that leads Castleford five points to the good and leads good work in getting the try to Sterling comes to naught that's right and uh, as, you, as you were saying earlier not the way to really get the crowd on your side no Leeds but, have really uh, got at least get the grip. crowd are responding the Leeds have really got a grip the, there's so many um, sides that are good in, in Super League and Dean said at the, at the start derby games against people like Castleford they're always difficult to predict the fact that Castleford haven't won a game Leeds have just beaten St Helens they mean absolutely nothing tonight unless Leeds can get their acting gear and That's get right. on with the game it really needs somebody to take this game by the scruff of the neck because to be fair Castleford are there for the beating they are and uh, say they, they may well tire but let's just hope that Leeds are still in the game when they do they need to play disciplined football Leeds Adrian Morley runs up the field gets uh, a head eye tackle from Brendan Tutor which is uh, finally been um, spotted by the referee and Leeds again get a penalty there ninth of the game Mercer finds Harris and Harris will need to uh, make sure he finds touches over into the south stand it goes to 15 metres inside the Leeds half of the field Collins then finds uh, a willing runner that willing runner is Martin Masella but there's been precious few tackles broken by Leeds players this evening Phil that's right Holroyd it needs to be opened up by skill Holroyd switches inside for uh, Jamie Field Jamie Field eventually thrown to the ground on the halfway line Collins again finds Holroyd Holroyd will look for Harris Harris taking play on taking him in on his own drops a fall inside for Anthony Farrell and Farrell but three men on Farrell and Castleford suddenly realise that they can win this game and they'll be fired up for the enthusiasm I think they know that if they can hold Leeds out for the next ten minutes they certainly can win this game if, Le if Leeds get back and score quickly then it's going to make it difficult good running from Adrian Morley Harris now finds Allroyd Allroyd out wide looks to go himself through the gap gets the ball back that's better play from Leeds but Marcellus tackled as soon as he got the ball and went up to the last tackle so Harris again looks to run the football on the last tackle gets a very high tackle there 
looks to get the ball away can't get the ball away puts the kick in nobody's going to chase that because nobody expected Harris but that shows you the measure of the man he still managed to get something away yeah, on the last tackle absolutely brilliant out of that that's the last but again tackle. a poor option on the last tackle that's the uh, zero tackle so Castle would have had one there on their own 20 metre line as Philisand tackles Richard Gay Chris Smith oh and that's not the uh, what, what you want to be doing when you're a winger running inside and getting tackled by Jamie Field in that manner Tuta now knocks back but he gets the ball out of the tackle and Leeds have not killed the ball at all this evening in the tackle that was one of the things they did against St Ellen's they made sure that St Ellen's never looked like offloading the ball or very rarely Middleton puts the ball down took his eye off it there so Leeds now at last a chance to put something together the 40 metres from that Castleford line Tonight's match sponsors, the big match 10,303 here so this evening and that's a good crowd on a Tuesday night against the bottom of the league Phil yeah again it's uh, it's a great crowd it's a testament to what's being built here but those foundations will look sh shaky if Leeds lose tonight Harris looking to and Leeds really have no idea what they're doing on attack there whatsoever no don't know who's supposed to be calling the moves there but there was nothing nothing going on well, yes, Denaris, welcome to Leeds. Yeah, he took just, a high shot there. Yes, he did indeed. And uh, I think that's rearranged his nose a little bit. Wayne Collins, what's the gap? Goes from dummy half, come away from touchline side. Wayne Collins, as he takes plane to the 20 metres, so Leeds at last a chance to put some pressure on. Marcella is the dummy runner, in fact, he stands still, and Allroyd now finds Harris. Harris will look to feed Allroyd now. Allroyd's long ball finds Morley. Leeds have got things happening here, but Morley comes back inside into the heavy traffic area. And really, Phil, they really need to be moving the ball about. They're trying to play all the game down the middle of the field. Yep, poor option again. Faddle again steps into trouble where there was a, looked an obvious more easily route down the middle of the field leads a view six tackles they've made about 15 meters and Holroyd has the ball in his hands puts a cross field kick high that's for Phil Hassan Marcus and Alaire chase knocked back by Leeds and Castleford have it back and Mike Ford now can he be pushed into touch right in front of us here in the north sand side Richard Gay brings the ball away from the touch line side bringing it down he's 30 meters from his own line as he's tackled there by Gary Mercer Flowers, we've seen Flowers win games for Castleford against Leeds, most notably uh, last season in the second game of the season. That's right, a killer. Middleton, well brought down. That's good defence from Leeds. It was it Graham Holroyd that did the tackling? Castleford again using that short side with uh, Nathan Sykes, who's bust through one tackle. The pass looked a mile forward. The crowd got screaming for a berserk, but difficult. Such big gaps now. Ford drills a football downfield. Gibson, what will he do this time? He'll He'll allow that, that to run. run again a very clever kick from Mike Ford right to the corner it's just basic rugby and it's it's working it certainly is and uh, for all the superstars at Leeds and the uh, big money spent on players Mike Ford has been the outstanding individual on the field this evening he has it's a long time since we could say that perhaps in his early days at Oldham and uh, Kesselford warming up some substitutes we'll see Leeds again running from the scrum with Gary Mercer making no ground whatsoever and uh, certainly in my mind an overwork ploy Blackmore now comes to bust off one man then another gets the ball back to that man in support yes in Harris Harris's ball is for Masella Masella wrapped up those for Leeds of you two tackles up and they've made five metres you have to say Masella just is not breaking tackles at the moment his efforts must be taking their toll on the yes, last few weeks yes he's probably not fit he was uh, struggling one man who is having a tremendous season for Leeds is the man with the, in possession of the football now coming up the middle of the field Anthony Farrell just bumped off out of three tackles there Holroyd finds Harris there's a gap there if Harris can go through it drops off inside for Richie Blackmore Blackmore's through the gap through the gap again through the second gap has he got anyone in support Blackmore has to take the tackle the support couldn't get where he wanted them he did the right thing to take the tackle Leeds get a penalty and I think somebody could be going to the bin here there's certainly something going on that's um, I think this could be the last warning for Castleford and uh, somebody's been called over it might be Mike Ford I think he's the captain so uh, he's probably being told that the next time his team interfere at the play of the ball that player will be sin binned so it's 14 Salford 12 is a scoreline coming in from uh, Norsley Road so that's a very close game neither side uh, wanting to give there and if Salford do win that that'll be tremendous uh, give their credentials a big uh, big boost yeah to Leeds. I think they've already uh, achieved more in that game than most people thought that they would and that's Again, Castleford standing offside at the penalty, but big, big charge. Marcella Morley now running onto the football from Wayne Collins. Leads six metres short now, centre field, just under the St. Helens post, moving the ball towards the south stand side, changing direction. 
That's from Masella to charge for the line. He's picked up bodily and all backwards there. That's good defence from Cass, keeping him out. Collins again, which way is he going to go? Marley's a dummy runner. Addis has got the ball in his hands. Finds all right out wide. All right looking to go himself. Pushed off there. Nobody in support for Graham All right, Eventually gets the ball back. And what on earth are Leeds doing here? They've lost 15, 20 metres in that, in that tackle there. No one in support of Graham Allroyd. And there's no six more tackles. It was a Leeds boot that put the ball back. Mercer runs himself from dummy half. Tries to get through. Up to the last tackle. Leads 10 metres from the line. Collins now finds Allroyd. Allroyd finds Harris. Harris coming across his field. Puts a little cross field kick in. And again, nobody up to, to tackle for Leeds. And Castleford can bring the ball away with Smith. Very poor option again on the last tackle. Yeah, again, it's all down to Leeds' poor options. You've got to credit the Castleford scrambling defence. But Leeds are really not putting them under pressure. That's a bit of a man warming up. It's Voles. He was off injured earlier on. And Simon Middleton just spins out of one tackle. And he's brought down in the next. And it's Tuta now. A man who will never give in, Brendan Tuta. Knocked down. And both sides look absolutely tired on the feet at the moment. Richard Russell goes from dummy half. Doesn't get any ground whatsoever, really. Makes a five, six metres. Certainly Tutor won't give in when there's Australians on the opposition's team. Schick. Looks to go through the gap, but he's brought down. Castleford have made 20 metres in that, 25 metres in that set of six. And now it's for Mike Fordy. He looks to run the football. And Leeds could have charged him down, closed him down. Instead, they let him get the kick in. The kick comes up for Marcus Sindelair and Marcus Sindelair will have to run that ball back towards his own quarter. Gets away from one and another. Stepping, still going. In fact, sometimes I wonder why players have to step the extra man when the gap's already opened. And that's a run up the middle of the field from Paul Sterling. Up to halfway, Sterling. That's good play. All right, goes in at dummy half. But Castleford back and the crowd behind leads now. Yestin Harris runs over the halfway line through the gap. Harris stepping, going himself, Harris. Oh, great tackle coming in from behind. Was it from Danny O? Indeed, it was Danny O. And Holroyd now, he's looking to go on his own. Steps, goes himself, twists and turns in the tackle. Can't get the ball away. Still going, though, as he got the legs all right. He's taking the play up to 10 metres. Leeds want the football in their hands quickly. Harris has got the ball now. Steps, goes himself. Flip back there for Mercer. Mercer's gap is for Jamie Field. Field stepping inside. He can't get the ball away. Well, Leeds 10 metres short underneath the post. Collins moves the ball to his left. Harris now. Short ball there was for 15. Philosan. Philosan is in for the try. Great defence. Great defence from Castleford. Kept Philosan out there when he looked to score it all over. And what have Leeds tried to do on the last tackle? Surely they haven't tried to butter their way over from dummy half. They have. And who would you bet the money to put that on? Gary Mercer. And so now Leeds have turned over with the, with the Castleford defence spread far and wide. If Leeds had got the ball out to the side, they had a five man overlap, Phil. Yeah, it's, again, it's. It's poor options, we keep saying it, but Leeds are not putting pressure on Castleford because of their poor options. Well, Danny Mercer is certainly never going to score a try from dummy half. So Francis Cummings on as Leeds ringing the changes, but really they're not um, getting anywhere. The, the defence is good, Castleford had six tackles and have made 20 metres. But again, Mike Ford just got the ball in his hands and just drills it into touch. Cummings picks it up, first touch of the football for a few weeks for Francis Cummings. As his ankle strapped up, steps inside, looks a good player, Francis Cummings, when he's running with the ball. Yeah. That's the zero tackle lead, 10 metres inside the Castleford half of the field. Masella has had a quiet game tonight, Martin Masella. Not really fit a field, there's a punch gone in at the tackle there and the touch should just come on. Masella certainly feeling it, depends who it is. There was Samson involved, there was Tutor involved, so take your pick there, Phil. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter, Perm, anyone from two. He wasn't really aware of it, but the touch judge came on, Masella gets to his feet, he's all right. And it's the baby-faced assassin. Which he doesn't like you calling him to his face. No, I'm supposed to call him the uh, back, room for, back row forward. But, uh, <laughs> I think he sent out a warning to clubs about three years ago that he'd rather they didn't use that term. That's right. Well. All right. Is he going to kick it? Go, Graham, all right. Well, it's a sensible option from Leeds. Certainly is at this stage. We've been playing for 20 minutes of this first half, second half. And Leeds with Holroyd looking to add the X's, it's a straight penalty 30 metres out just to the well probably level with the uh, right hand upright as Holroyd will be looking at his left footed kicker and so it's a good side for him and it's uh, he's of course playing towards the uh, pavilion end of the ground and this is Holroyd's first kick as Harris has uh, given up the kicking duties, kicking one from three Holroyd kicks straight high swinging and it's converted it successfully. Hi, this is Graham Holroyd. You're listening to Radio Rhino on 14.04 a.m. So Holroyd then kicks that one. Leads 12, Castleford 15. 
And just 60 minutes gone then. So one from one, and really we need some uh, bugle ball calling now. And Leeds really need to get up there and do some more of that tremendous uh, defence that we just saw in the last few tackles. In the last set of six where Leeds kept Castleford to pen to that 20 metres. Castleford running the ball out now with Jason Flowers and he's rocked back into the 20 metre area. So again, it's good defence from Leeds. And let's hope that that's just lifted Leeds because they can play much better than they've played tonight. They can, but now it's getting to the stage where they've just got to hang in there and try and grab a win. Keep the momentum going for Sunday. As it won't be easy at the Don Valley Stadium. Tight, small pitch. Lost the football and Leeds pick it up with Gary Mercer who allows himself to be tackled. And Martin Masella really should have taken that ball. I don't know why he was backing off it. That's Richie Blackmore. So Leeds 30 metres out, centre field. Trailing here by 12 points to 15. And lost the football and it's gone and it's gone fairly, says the referee. And Anthony Faddle that was. So again, Leeds losing the ball early in the tackle count. Richard Gay looks to step his way through. Harris brings him down with Collins. Nathan Sykes. Again, Leeds covering the options so Sykes can't uh, pass the football. Plays the ball, finds uh, Ford. Ford's for Andrew Schick out wide. And uh, Schick's caused problems out wide, and that's well done by Richie Blackmore. Stole Richie the ball. Blackmore stole the ball. In a one on one tackle, and Leeds have it now. Paul Sterling, it was who got the ball. Marcella drives forward. Collins is quickly in at dummy half, leads into the Castleford half of the field. Yes, Denaris now with the football. Looks to drop off inside for Adrian Morley. Morley's running the angles, running well, Morley. Can't get the ball away, he's fallen on the floor and Leeds have not made any ground whatsoever. Jamie Field just puts the hammer down now. In fact, surprisingly enough, the most time on the Leeds team looks Jamie Field at the moment. So, Gary Mercer. In fact, it's Marcella driving forward. And that's the first tackle he's beaten. And that's right. That may be a sign that Castleford are tiring. Up to the 20 metres now. Wayne Collins goes himself from dummy half. That's better play from Leeds. And on the last tackle, though, now, they are 10 metres from the Castleford line. Bringing the ball back through the arms of Graham Holroyd. Holroyd looking to run himself. Puts a little grubber kick through. Has he got the legs to chase it? Holroyd it just beats everyone and goes dead. And again, a, a poor option, though. Poor option on the last tackle from Leeds there. Not the really required thing to do. There was men to stand out, and really Leeds would be better running it. Or as Mike Stevenson says, which I'm sure he invented, the power play. We've not seen that from Leeds at all on the last tackle. Either that or put the ball into the uh, in goal area and make Castleford drop out. That's right, it was too hard that kick, and really Leeds have just got another set of six to tackle. The minutes tick away. Nathan Sykes is off, and Paul Smith is on. For Castleford is there looking to obviously bring some fresh legs on now. And good defence coming in there from Adrian Morley. One Danny O. Schick again running out wide. Well, he's certainly not uh, done any driving down the middle of the field, Andrew Schick. No, he's played all his rugby out wide. He's looked very good apart from once when he just lost the ball. Mike Ford again. Oh, and that's a lovely play from Ford and Castleford looking to forward pass there a mile forward. The referee spotted it. Well, it, I think the crowd gave that one. The referee was nowhere near that. I don't know whether he took advice from his touch judge, but it looked like uh, that was in response to the crowd, I have to say. Well, I think he actually took advice from Ronnie the Rhino, who <laughs> was uh, jumping up and down and waving his arms in a forward motion, right in line with where the pass was. So Ron we'll, Ronnie the ref. Yes, Ronnie the ref. So we'll watch now as uh, Game All Wide works the feed. That finds Harris. Harris is not going anywhere because nobody was with Harris there at all. Again, Blackmore had overrun him. And Sterling now on the far side gets the ball away as he got the leg Sterling he's past one man he's going Sterling for the corner as he got the legs to go Paul Sterling he'll back himself he's running to touch on the first tackle but he had to back himself for the try Phil yeah you always do that the worst that was going to happen is what did happen and that was uh, forcing him out on the outside and you have to say that uh, the Castleford cover coming across was quite sensational I presume it was uh, Jason Flowers was it yes and uh, probably over on that far side Simon Middleton so he Looks would. like Mike Ford as well. Yep, good play there from Castleford. But Leeds have got Castleford down here now, and they really need to force the error down here. They need to keep Castleford pending this 20 metre. We've seen that they can do that in the, in the set of six earlier in this half, and they've got to enforce the error, but they've really got to get it together on attack at the moment. Ford gets the ball out, Middleton comes running across. Good defence though from Leeds, from Yestin Harris. Castleford going from dummy half, Richard Gay, but again he's knocked down. Up to the 20 metres. Castleford looking to spin that ball. This is the new man, Paul Smith. Knocked down. 
just play outside the 20 metres. So Castleford making ground, not a lot of ground, but they're making ground. And this is for Samson. He'll make ground all night if Leeds let him. Oh, a forward pass there. That was offside. The player stood miles in front of the man when he passed it, Samson. And uh, again, this has given Leeds a good chance and a good attacking option. But can well, they do anything the, about it, Phil? That could be a suicide play. That was Samson to all forward pass, really on their own, what, 22 metre line. And Leeds have got to score from this six. They really need to because uh, time will be running out for Leeds and the longer it takes to score, the longer that Castleford will hold on. They'll feel they can hold on. Yestin Harris looking to dodge and weave. He has to take the tackle. Leeds have had eight scums now. Philisan goes powering towards the line. Ten metres from that Castleford line then. Philisan in possession. Gary Mercer at dummy half. Finds Allroyd. Allroyd looking to go himself. Drops off inside. Ball heads for Masella. Masella charges forward. Leeds five metres short now. Can they score? A try, of course, would give them the lead. Harris. A long ball out to Holroyd. Holroyd drops a long ball out there to Blackmore. Blackmore, it's a ball in at the corner. That's a try over wide out there. It looks like um, Damien Gibson. Could be Damien Gibson on the far side. But it's a try to Leeds, and that's put them in the lead. And that's the first time they've been in the lead in this game. And again, two great long balls from the half-backs. Harris, Holroyd, Blackmore was the one that stood up the defence, palmed the ball on, and it looked like Gibson just got in front of Paul Sterling, took the pass and powered over to the corner. In fact, I think it was Francis Cummins who scored the try. It could have been Cummins wrapping round. So Leeds eventually get back in the lead, Phil, or as I say, in the lead, they actually take the lead. Well, that's the first time Leeds have been in the lead. The, the nearest they'd been up till then was drawing at 6 all, and uh, you just wonder, with maybe 12 minutes to go, whether... Uh, Castleford will now tire. Well, Holroyd comes in, puts the kick over. And Holroyd goes in off the post, and it's the post, and it goes in. So that's better than Bobby Ulding, who hit the post and came out. Yeah, and sometimes when you look in, it's in, and really there. The Castleford fans must be absolutely beside themselves because that is a really painful conversion. Hi, this is Francis Cummins. You're listening to Radio Rhino on 14.04 a.m. Francis Cummins, a try scorer. You are listening indeed to 14.04 a.m. 18.15, but Leeds need to score next, Phil. Yeah, certainly do. Need to score next to perhaps kill the game off. And Castleford with Paul Smith coming running forward, but Leeds have now renewed vigour and fight, and that's what they've got to do. They can't afford any uh, mistakes. They've got to pen men down. Richard Gage is trying to make his way forward. I think the other thing as well is the two scorers there for Leeds, both substitutes, and that's been important. Yes, um, as men tie, and it's good to see Francis Cummins back, and Graham Allroyd, who didn't have much part to play in the game against St Helens. Samson, well tackled there by Leeds. Samson and Leeds' defence has got to be good. just somebody in the face, Samson. In fact, it's Graham Allroyd. Oh, and Castleford away, there's going to be a try here. Middleton, oh, do you believe it? Would you believe it? And Leeds have allowed Castleford to run 50 metres to score a try, which puts them back in front of the game. Well, that's absolute disgraceful defence there from Leeds. That's absolutely right. Absolutely disgraceful play from Leeds. Again, Leeds did all the hard work, but full credit to Castleford. It was Mike Ford again to the line, Richard Russell in support, position Middleton, Middleton to the side of the post, and Leeds have got it all to do now. And Leeds are going to lose this game, Phil. Um, and they've only themselves to blame. They really have. That was a disgraceful try. Castleford haven't got a man that can run 50 metres. And they've just let an hooker and a winger do it for them with nobody in support from Leeds to do the tackling right under the post. So Castleford go back in the lead again. And who can say they don't deserve it for well, the way they, they've been they playing do tonight. this evening? They definitely do. I mean, nobody's tackled Mike Ford in position no, of football. Again, nobody's tried to put him out of the game. It was Mike Ford again that set that up. But a credit to Richard Russell and to Simon Middleton. And it's converted by Tonks. And Leeds, 21 points to 18 down. Well, there's still eight minutes to go. The game isn't over yet, but Leeds are going to really have to dig deep if they're going to get anything out of this. Well, it's as good as how many times is the PA announcer going to ask for the crowd to lift Leeds? Because really, they were lifted then and they just went to sleep again. Nothing on when that ball was got there. Mike Ford's been allowed to run around as though he owns the place. Yeah, Mike Ford has been absolutely sensational tonight. And again, with all due respect to Mike Ford, he's virtually wearing the squad number on his back that he is held. And he's proved that that age doesn't matter. That's right. And Leeds, really. I'm afraid the bugle caller will have to do better than that tonight, Phil. Because Leeds are really throwing this game away. I can't believe this is the same Leeds team who've played so well in the last two games. Again, there's always been a tendency that Leeds can lift themselves for the big games. And Marcella's just strolling through the game at the moment. 
Yeah, I, mean, I, really I would certainly be thinking about bringing Nick Fozard on for Masella. All right. Gets to go himself. Nowhere through for Graham All right. And leads up 10 metres inside their own half of the field as they're playing the football. They've had three tackles yesterday, Addis. What can he do? Gets a good ball out there to Masella. But Masella really, that ball wasn't for him, and Masella's in the way. And Leeds now looking to run the power play. Damien Gibson looks to go himself. He's got men with him, has he? Can't get the ball away, and he's going to run out there, and it's going to be the last tackle turnover. Again, poor option on the last tackle. Well, the last option kicking tonight from Leeds, and the last option on the, on the thing has been the worst I've seen for the full season from Leeds. And really, they need to get the ball back, and I don't know how they're going to do it, Phil, but uh, we've only seen the two tries in the second half Cummins scored a great tie out there but Leeds really should have been sowing this game up now well certainly when Cummins put them in front for the first time that should have been it and Tutor's off down the middle now and Leeds don't look like they can make a tackle Mike Ford again finds Samson and that's been a really productive route for Castleford and nobody's hit Mike Ford at all in I don't think he's taken the tackle all he night. hasn't indeed and nobody's even tackled him after he's passed Danny Orr just wrapped up in the middle of the field up to the last tackle now Castle that haven't made much ground but that doesn't matter they need to just keep hold of the football Mike Ford again kicks it downfield that's a great kick from Mike Ford class play there from Mike Ford and he's something that Leeds haven't got at the moment a class scrum half that's right so the Alice picks up his second man of the match award and really you can hear what the crowd think of that because well, um, it's, it, he's been at the heart of most Leeds things but there been hasn't a, been many Leeds no, things to be at the heart of I was going to say it's been a difficult choice and certainly uh, Fozard is on I presume it's Masella who's going to be coming off it will be Masella he looks out on his feet Martin Masella Fozard comes on now final substitution number 17 Nick Fozard replacing number 8 Martin Masella and the blood bin substitution for uh, one of the baldies it's uh, Samson and Castleford will bring Nathan Sykes back on and the referee says uh, get on the field but really what time is he left on the clock Phil? Are I would think about another six minutes maybe six minutes then for Leeds to pull something out of this uh, game tonight otherwise all the good work against St Helens has comes to absolutely nothing yep, and that's a up. typical what Leeds have done in the last few seasons Harris now has the football Blackmore and Leeds looking to bring Blackmore out wide but we've seen very little of him on attack he can't get the ball away there Castleford are all over now they realise they're going to win this game Phil they can win this game and that's all they want to do well one moment of brilliance and Phil Hassan doing well there will See, change the Black course of the game you've got Blackmore out of the uh, away Phil Hassan again goes up the middle of the field into the Castleford half of the field that's better so Leeds need to build on this now and get the ball away there's Castleford there's gaps all over there if, if so oh what a poor pass to Maris put the man into trouble Straight up with the tackler, the only tackler within 10 metres of that one. It was Graham Allroyd who got a real cut for it there. Of, um, and he did well to hold Grant on Anderson, to it. And he did indeed. Leeds moving that ball on the far side. Damien Gibson's in the line. Coming back. I would just spread it wide. There are gaps there. There are gaps. Allroyd now looking to run with the football. Oh, Allroyd's not got through again. He's tried that four or five times this evening. He's not got through once. Fozard's at dummy half. That's not what you want. Harris puts a little kick in field. The ball's bouncing awkwardly, but it bounces straight for a Castleford man. And options and time running out for Leeds. That was the best option they'd had on the last tackle for a while. Yeah, but again, the, the, the chasers weren't really there. Flowers. Locked down on his heels. Leeds only need a try to win this game, but at the moment, they don't look like they can get anywhere near the Castleford line. And if we were being honest, we'd say they wouldn't deserve it. No, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't at this rate. They've not played very well at all this evening. They've allowed a, a two-bit run of the mill side. And Richard Gay coming away again there. A side who can't uh, string three passes together in Super League. Not got a point this year, Castleford. They've allowed an old man from Wakefield Trinity to dominate the game. And they've allowed uh, Castleford to spread the ball and play at will. Every time they've looked like coming back, Leeds have allowed Castleford back into the game. And time is running out for Leeds now. I wonder how many phone calls will be on Radio Rhino this evening. And really, we can't afford to do this, Phil. This is not what... Uh, the, the fans will not come in great numbers because they're two difficult away trips to go now at Sheffield and at London and then how many people will be here to see Paris who don't bring anybody with them on um, May the 30th it's if right. Leeds can't win tonight it's amazing how uh, these things can turn around sometimes Leeds really now probably have got their last I mean they, they may get one more set of six but last set of six on their own uh, 20 was it 15 metre mark 15 metre mark what Mer can they do Mercer's option of picking the ball up from the scrum again just getting tackled a waste of another tackle there they need an organiser 
Well, Yestin Harris is the best organiser they've got, but the ball's not getting anywhere near him. Well, Yestin Harris must be exhausted as well. It's his third big game since he signed. Steps. He can't get he the can't, ball away. He can't do a lot more as an individual, but he hasn't had a lot working with him He's tonight. He's had no support whatsoever for most of the time. He's had the football. Gary Mercer just runs out wide, drops off for Anthony Farrell. Farrell stepping, going up the middle of the field. Still going, Anthony Farrell. No support, though. Eventually, all right, gets there and gets the football. Get the ball out wide, all right, to Blackmore. Blackmore. Lovely ball out there for Cummins. Cummins is going out on the north side. He's got Jason Flowers to beat as he gets the ball back inside. Phyllis Ham picks up for Leeds. I thought Cummins was all the way a scorer there, but Castleford held him out. Great cover from Jason Flowers. He couldn't do anything other than Harris now moving the ball across the Castleford defensive sliding. Morley gives it out there wide to Mercer. Mercer goes on his own. Has he got the legs? He puts the ball back inside. And he's, oh, what a pass that was. Absolutely, Mercer should have given the ball the first time to the winger. He throws it back inside. The ball goes on the floor and Castle will pick up. Well, that's the game over now. Game set and match because Leeds should have scored there. Phil. Yeah, last chance again. If you're going to go, you hold on to the ball. If you're tackled, uh, you don't give the pass once you've hit the ground. Yeah, there's a no one there. And Mercer really should have given the ball to Sterling earlier on. But for Le Leeds only need the try at the moment to put them back yeah, in front. Yeah, even in the corner would have done. Last tackle coming up. So you can expect a big kick downfield from Mike Ford. He's been allowed space, nobody's going to chase him down now. In fact, he steps out of one tackle and another and puts the ball down. Sterling picks it up and Leeds are coming back now up the middle of the field with Paul Sterling. Great defence though from Castleford. First tackle comes up now. Harris has the football in his hands. There's no organisation in the Leeds attack. And Harris has to take the tackle again. How many times has he been tackled this evening, Phil? A lot more than Mike Ford. Certainly a lot more than Mike Ford. In fact, he's been probably tackled in the last two minutes more than Mike Ford. All right again, looks to step and go himself. Nowhere to go for Graham All right, Must be into the last two or three minutes of this game now. Last, certainly last minute and a half, I think. Yestin Harris looking to put the ball out to Anthony Faddle. Faddle trying to go back, but Leeds are trying to go up the middle of the field all the time, Phil. Can't believe that I'm seeing this sort of play from Leeds. Up the middle of the field, one-on-one. -on -one. Phil Lassan throws the ball back again. Back to, to Cummins on the wing. Stepping inside, Cummins dodging, dunking, weaving, musting out of one tackle. And Leeds not making enough ground. Straight passing across the field and some good running forward with some dummy runners is what Leeds require now. Holroyd again looks to throw a long, long pass out there. That's found Blackmore in the space now for Leeds. Blackmore going himself for the corner. Oh, Blackmore, oh, and he's not in for the try. Would you believe it? He's not in for the try, Blackmore. Sterling, what's happened there? Leeds get a penalty. And the ball's kicked away. Should be a sim bin in there, but it's too late now. Mercy will tap the football. Gets the ball back there to Harris. Harris throws a long ball out to Faddle. Faddle, can he go himself? Will he put the ball out now? Still going, Anthony Faddle. Now he's going to be in for the try. He's in for the try. That might be the winner for Leeds, but that's a great, really hard work for this Leeds tonight. Faddle, great try there from Anthony Faddle. Kidded everyone, but really, Richie Blackmore should have put the winger in on the far side. Well, sometimes in rugby league there's no justice, and we sit here as Leeds fans with smiles on our faces because Leeds have pulled it out of the fire at the last minute. Anthony Farrell deserved his try. I mean, come down to Headingley if you want excitement and entertainment, but I just think you should spare a thought for the Castleford players. Absolutely dejected behind their own line. The tackle on on Blackmore was sensational to keep him out it looked as though Leeds had played all the races there was nothing left and Anthony Farrell danced over the Castleford fans are leaving there must be tears in their eyes and if Leeds have won this game then certainly for Mike Ford there is no justice maybe Leeds are doing this season what St Helens did last yes they won a lot of games in the last minute all right will take forever with his kick and so he should well, Farrell went over for the try there after Blackmore had looked all the way, scholar. I thought that Blackmore should have put Sterling in, but he looked too much pace, Richie Blackmore. And then he's moved the ball across. Farrell had a huge um, number of people he could use as a foil. He used them all as a file. Arked away, just beat the fullback. All right, kicks. That's three from three. And leads. Well, again, so we, we can't say this game's over because we saw that Castleford came straight back last time. But you, if Leeds can't hold on to this then they don't deserve to win another game. And Paul Wright. A successful conversion from the Rhinos, number 14. Hi, this is Anthony Farrell. Join the charge with Radio Rhino on 14.04 AM. So Leeds now really need to keep men 
pinned down here. Mike Ford gets the ball away. And surely the Leeds defence won't cave in now. There goes the hula, so Leeds have it. Well, would you believe it? 18-15, 21-18, 24-21. What a tremendous performance there from Leeds at the end. They managed to score the try. Four tries to lead, 16 points and three goals. Two from two from Graham Allroyd, and one from three from Justin Harris. Great performance in the second half from both sides and really Castleford, how can they be at the uh, bottom of Super League when they can play like that? They go to Halifax on Sunday and, uh, and Halifax um, official sat in front of me, he's got a big smile all over his face and uh, he's hoping that they don't come and play like that. I think all, all we can say really there is again that's a, the value of Super League and uh, two great games again. Well we've got uh, Chris Murgatroyd here who's the uh, marketing manager for Halifax. Chris, what did you think of the game tonight? Well, I, I, I'm saying that I'm not as confident about going to Castleford on Sunday as we were before I saw tonight. It was a great game, fantastic close game, good tries at either end, and I think the teams were fairly evenly balanced. But Castleford put on a good performance tonight, and really, they would have deserved to win the game. But all credit to Leeds, they came back and they did the business right at the last minute. OK, that's Chris Murgatroyd from Halifax. I'll just run through the second half scorers. Leeds led, uh, Leeds were trailing 11-6 at half time. Sterling scored his try in the third minute of the second half to make it 10-11. Then Russell replied from dummy half to make it 15-10. It was all over for Leeds, but no, they got it back to um, with a penalty from Graham Allroyd to make it 15 points to 12. And then Cummins had a try on 66 minutes to put Leeds in the lead for the first time. Allroyd converted superbly from touchline side. 18-15 it was then. Could Leeds hang on? No, they couldn't because immediately Castleford came the field. Middleton and uh, worked the oracle there with Richard Russell. Over for the try. Tonks converted. 21-18, but right on the death there, Anthony Faddle went over for the try, which Graham Allroyd converted. So it's Leeds 24, St. Uh, Castleford Tigers 21.